Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 11 of the platform specific series of my 68,000 programming tutorials. If you've been following this series, you know we've been looking at joysticks and how to read them in on all of the systems. We're going to be looking this week at the Genesis, also known as the Mega Drive, and we're going to look at how to read in the joysticks on that system. Now, the system is a bit interesting because firstly, it has backwards compatibility with the Master System, and I think that comes into part of the way that we read from the joystick. But also, while the original joysticks only had three fire buttons, later there was an extension and some controllers with six buttons were added. We're going to learn how to read the full six button joysticks because I think that's quite interesting. Uh, and it does mean that there is some rules to the way we have to control the hardware to do that. Now in these tutorials we read in into a byte pair for each joystick and there is a common format for that and it's based originally on a single byte that I used in my Z80 tutorials. So what we're going to do is we're going to read from bits 0 to 3 as up, down, left, right. We're going to read in the first three files in bits 4, 5 and 6. We're going to read in any kind of start button into bit 7 and then any remaining buttons are going to be loaded in into a second byte. That that's to maintain compatibility with the other system and the Z80 tutorials. So that's what we're going to be doing. Now first, let's just have a quick look at the tutorial in action. So we're using this read controls dual command, which will read in two words from the hardware. Now all we're doing once we've read that in is we're showing the monitor to the screen here. And I've got two joypads here. So if we just figure out which one's which. So here's up, down, left, right, and then fire one, fire two, fire three, Fire 4, now you'll notice that's in an odd position and that's because we've got the start button just there. So that's the start button. The mode button is here, but a lot of joysticks don't have the mode button. I've got a physical six button joystick for my Genesis. It's not got a mode button. So you probably want to avoid using that mode button if you can. But you can see here, we can use both joypads and we can read in all those buttons and also the mode buttons and the start buttons. So that's the code we're using today. And this was the code I wrote for the Grime 68000 tutorials. So it's certainly something that will work for you if you're looking to write your own games. So how does joystick work reading work on the Genesis and the Mega Drive? Well, we have two ports that are relevant to each controller. So we have a data port and a control port for each controller. Now the control port actually just selects whether the bits of the data port are read or write bits. Now we need to set bit six to write because bit six actually defines which set of controls we're reading in. Once we've set the control port once, we don't need to use it again. What we then need to do is we actually need to write to the data port to select one of the sets of keys and then read in and that will give us the returned state of those keys. Now, because the system originally was based on the master system and then extended to the Genesis and then extended again to the six button Genesis joypads, there is a rather odd combination of to read in from these. What we need to do is we need to write the sixth bit, which is known as the TH bit, and we need to write that as a one to get the first set of controls up, down, left, right, and two of the buttons. Then we write a zero to get the extra button and the start button. Now, each time we write to this, we are effectively switching the state. So the first one gets the, this line, the second zero gets this line, a third one will get this line again, a fourth zero will get this line, but then when we do a fifth one, we actually get something different. You see, they've, been, they've used basically a state toggle to allow the extra set of keys that were added later in the Genesis's life to be read in while maintaining compatibility with the simpler three button joysticks. So once we've done that, third right of one, the fifth right in our combination, we will then get in the X, Y, Z and the mode button. You'll notice there are duplicates of the C and B buttons here and up and down here, but we're not going to be reading those in, so I've highlighted them grey. But this is what we need to do to get these buttons here. And then to complete the sequence, we need to do another right of a zero bit to that bit six. And that will cycle us back to the very start so that when our right of one occurs next, we get the normal up, down, left and right buttons again. Now, of course, we're going to see this all in code. I just wanted to show you this table to make it clear what data was available to us and how we had to use that six bit to configure things. Let's have a look at the actual code that does the work today. So here it is. We've got a command we're using called player read one. This will read in the buttons from one of the joysticks. Now, as of course, the only real difference between the way we're doing things is the port we're using as our data port. So what we're doing is we're loading the data port for the controller into A0 here, and then all of the commands in read one are using that A0, 
and are toggling the different sets of keys and shifting the keys around into the format we want. So we're just saving a little bit of memory here by using that subroutine. First, we're doing joystick two here, and then we're doing joystick one here. And of course, in both cases, we need to set all of the bits to read, except for that bit six, that TH bit, we need to set that to write. And we're doing that by setting a one here, which will set that bit to write. The ports, of course, are different depending on the joysticks, but there's no logical reason to use an A1 or anything here because we only need to do a single write to these ports just to initialize things. So then we drop into this read one routine here, which will read in our joystick. So what we're doing is we're moving hexadecimal 40, which is a write of bit six as one. So what we're doing here is we're setting this bit to one here, and that means we will have access to up, down, left, right, C and B here. So we're reading that into D2 here. Now we're sending a zero, and that means we have this time the A and start. Of course, we have down and up here, but we're not going to use them in this case. We're going to use A and start from this option here. So we've got those here, and we're storing that in D1. And each time we are setting bit six here, we're having to do a couple of no-ops just to delay things, just as a pause to allow the hardware to respond. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to send a one, a zero, and a one. And these are the extra parts after those first two reads that we need to do to get to the X, Y, Z, and mode options. So we're doing those here, and then we're reading in that byte here. And then finally, we need to do that write of a zero just to complete the sequence and get us back to the state that when we read again next time, everything will be back to normal. So once we get to this point, we've read in all of our keys and we've got them in D1, D2 and D3. All we're doing now is we are doing a lot of bit shifts here and we're shifting out each of the controls up, down, left and right, A, B, C, start, X, Y and Z and then mode here. So we're shifting those out of the bytes that we've read in and we are just putting them into the correct positions within the resulting byte with, and storing that final result in D0 here. And you can see this is going to be effectively into this format here. So we've got A, B, C here, X, Y, Z here, and we've got the start button here, and then we've got the mode button which is being shifted to this position here. We don't have a button for F8 here. Now, once we've done that, all we're doing then is we're setting the unused bits to one here because we want to make sure that any unused bits are set high. Whenever we press a button down, it goes to zero, of course, in these tutorials. So we just need to make sure that maybe another system will come along later with more joystick buttons. We want to make sure any unused buttons are never pressed down because our software might malfunction if we did that. So that's all we need to do. And once we get to this point, we've effectively sorted everything out. So we've just shifted in each of the bits here via bit shifts. We've then done an AND and some rotation here to get the X, Y, Z and the M and the mode button. But once we've done that, everything is in the correct position and we just return here. Now, when we do joystick two, we back that up from D0 into the stack and then pop it out into D1. And when we do joystick one, we just start, that just saves directly into D0 here. Of course, this means that when we run our example here, we have the results shown just here, and that's really all there is to it. So once we've done this, we can just then test D0 and D1 to see the state of each of the buttons of the joystick. And as I've said before, the important thing to understand is we've not just done this on all of the 68,000 systems. We've also done it on all the 6502 and Z80 systems using the exact same format of the bytes. So we can more easily port our games across systems without worrying about how many buttons we've got, without worrying about the underlying hardware. And hopefully that all allows to port our games a bit more easily. So there we go. So that's really all there is to reading in the joystick from the Genesis. I mean, it's relatively straightforward. It's a digital joystick and the hardware has made it relatively easy for us. The only tricky thing is we do have to work with that XYZ option for getting in the extra buttons. Anyway, thanks for watching today and goodbye.